curious, very interesting. Hello, so here I am. This is one of my personal favorite predators and in lieu of mental and intellectual disabilities, pretty sure this guy is literally an alien in human skin. I... You tell me. You tell me what you guys think. It is future me. Well, now it's the past me. Jerry Co Co Coax has taught us how to time travel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching this and there's a lot of missed opportunities for jokes. And then it's like, oh no. Eh. It's future me, past me, coming at you again. But you're going to see me pop in and out. Don't be afraid. We come in peace. Unless you're a child predator. Not you, Bubby. You're not a child predator. She's a good girl. All right, here we go. Anybody home? Anybody home? Oh. You haven't finished brushing my teeth, okay? You haven't finished yet. Yeah. Did you bring me chocolate? No, I forgot. Gotta at least have the chocolates. You gotta have the chocolate. She asked for chocolates. Oh, I forgot. She said, no. I mean, I would too. I did. You could have a workout today. Say what? Say a nice little walk today. You did. Where did you have to walk from? Oh, way, way, way. There it is. Way, way, way. Way, way. The way, 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 predator. Chris Hansen goes the way, way. All right, all right. I'll bite. Way, way. Why don't you come on over here and have a seat on the stool park, please? Sure. Where did you walk from today? Mars. Oh, from, uh... Please sit down. He's being so gentle with him. He said, here, sit down. I guess you can tell something's not quite right. Uh, Riverside. Riverside. Yeah. How far was the walk? I don't remember. It was, way, it was pretty well, far, though. Yeah. Whoa. It's pretty far, though. And then he does that little smile. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going, I'm going off the theory that he's a, a reptilian. Whose hologram is uh, not quite doing the job? What <laughs> make you walk so far? Those teeth. He's got way too many teeth. He looks like AI. Hmm. On a Sunday morning. Hmm. Sunday morning. I am outside to say hi and meet a friend. Hi and meet a friend. Yeah, but I probably got the wrong address. The wrong address. Most likely. Most likely. There's something very odd about. The facial expressions. Can't put my finger on it. And why do you say that? No, because I wrote down 77. 77. Yeah, 17. 27, 17. That's the name of an asteroid. Ah. Uh, so what makes you think you got the wrong address here? Well, I'm just guessing. Big this guy. Big this guy. Big this guy. Big this guy. And who is your friend who you were coming to see? Uh, baby, baby, Chloe? Chloe. That's my mom's name. Oh. Right. We've well, got the right address for Chloe. I do? Yeah. And how old is Chloe? Uh, okay, I believe about... Eighteen. Eighteen. Even have to stop and like try to recall what the age of consent is on Earth. Well, that would make it better for your story if she was eighteen. That's an objective question. I can answer that one. Well, yeah. Yes, yeah, so it it would be better for my story. Yes. Well, yeah. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Well, yeah. Because she'd be an adult then. Yeah, I know. And there wouldn't be a problem with you visiting her. Yeah. 
this guy, this guy. Something very uncanny. He's the uncanny valley predator. On top of it all, TBH. Let me flex on my guitars. Yeah, what's good? <laughs> Told you on the internet, is it? I believe not. You believe not? I think you know. Yes. And what age did she say? I believe... 13. 13. Okay. And how old are you? 30. 30. I'm 30. Well, I'm about to be. And your name is? Jerry. Jerry. Jerry, what's your last name? Closest. And why did you come here, Jerry, to see a 13-year-old girl? You know, outside of maybe... Starting a franchise, nothing else serious. Nothing else serious? <laughs> uh, nothing serious, no. I'm just here for a, a friend. A friend I can fuck. Having a friendship? Yeah. And do you see an issue with a 30 year old man starting a friendship with a 13 year old girl? Yeah, I can see. Alone? Yeah, I see that. You see why that might be a problem? Or yes. And do you have children yourself? None. Me, kids? No, 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 no. Children? No, no, no. We don't reproduce that way on my planet. <laughs> None. Outstanding. What made you feel so comfortable coming into a home where there was apparently a 13-year-old girl home alone? Well, outside, and maybe wanting to be, I guess, I guess, be like, I guess a mentor or something like that. A mentor? Wow. A mentor? Yes, he's come to provide cosmic guidance to the girl. Uh, duh, he's a starseed ascended master. Come to bring the indigo children to their rightful place on the throne of New Earth. A mentor in what way? Hmm, positive, I would hope. Positive. That is a really easy way to answer that question. It's kind of a genius response to be. So, what was that shifty eye? That was intense. How were you going to mentor this 13 year old girl? Uh, what is that accent? One of the things I would do would just be all within. But I could possibly, you know, get to like, I'll give anybody. Ever had a dreams that you don't get to like, I'll give anybody. That you um you had. You don't get to like, I'll give anybody. You you. You don't get to like, I'll give anybody. Be like a big brother or not. Big brother. Big brother. A a aspect. Yeah. Big brother goes beyond galaxies, and remember, he's always watching. Bubby's big brother. Yes. So you were coming here to be the big brother. I would like to try to be one. You would. If it's possible. And what kind of things in your mind does a big brother do with his 13-year-old adopted sister? Well, help out with homework. Help, help out. out with homework. He wants to help her with her homework, you know? You know? He wants to help her with her homework because basic math, that's like basic algebra. I would assume that an extraterrestrial would at least have a basic understanding of how numbers work in order to get here. I mean, even to drive a car on Earth, you gotta know the MPH. Jeez. That's handy. What else? Mm. Hmm. Big brothers. Big brothers. Big brothers. He's like Googling big brothers in his brain. He's getting like a weird mix of porn, political propaganda, and you know, like Seventh Heaven clips. Anyone remember Seventh Heaven? Seventh Heaven. Seventh Heaven. Oh, fun fact, not really a fun fact. The guy who plays the dad, the Reverend, he was outed for being a pedophile. It all comes full circle. It all comes full circle. Talk about things that's possible. Think, you know, be, you know, you get brotherly advice. Brotherly advice. About things like what? Mm, anything in general. Anything in general. If possible. Yeah, I try to stay as under the radar as possible. I don't know if you could tell, but I'm not actually human. Now, the kind of brotherly advice you talk about in your chat here doesn't seem like the wholesome kind of homework type advice you're talking to me about. Okay. 
Well, I didn't know that, Chris. You know, I'm still learning. This might, okay, Chris, this is, it's my first time here. Okay. You know, I'm all about, you know, uh, self-improvement. I take criticism very well, as long as it's constructive, Chris. Yeah, Chris, I'll take your word on that. You know what I'm referring to. Yeah. Yeah. See, I have all the information, Chris. I just don't know how you put it together. There's some pretty inappropriate stuff in here. Yes. And the kind of mentoring you're talking about in your chat involves... Yeah. ...her doing some sexual things to you. Sexual? Chris Anson's channeling Sean Connery. I never said anything about in that nature. Well, her getting on top of you and urinating on you. Okay. Okay. Urination. Sexual. Got it. Got it. Oh, dang! How? I got the chat right okay. there, Jerry. I mean... I can read it back to you if you like. No, you don't have to. You talk about... whether or not she drinks. You talk about tickling her. Red flag. The tickle. Tickling is all fun and games until somebody... Actually, tickling is never all fun and games. I'm not laughing. Yeah, that. But... Nothing. You talk to... about seeing her cuter side. What's my cuter side if you pull your pants and panties down? Dang. I could see that. No. I'll give you that one, Chris. For sure. For sure. I said if I, if I would, I would be. I was trying to dance around that. Yeah, well, you were trying to dance around it. How did that work out for you? Well... Skipped over it, I believe. I don't want to get that far into that side of the chat. That's... You didn't want to get too far in that side of the chat? Yeah. You talk about what kind of clothes you'd like her to wear. Tank top. A micro mini skirt. Micro mini? She asks about panties and you say, you can't go without that? It's official. You suck. I mean, you basically ask her to urinate. You basically asked her to fucking urinate on you, bro. That's fucking... Right. Bleh, bleh. Pee pee, oh, ew. ew! Right? Alright. Is that appropriate talk to have with a 13 year old girl? No, it's not. Then why did you do it? I wasn't thinking too clearly. Do you do this sort of thing often? No. Not at all. Not at all. You see. I don't get out to this neck of the woods. You see, I come from way, way, way back there. That was a very convicted no. No. I think he's starting to like turn on himself. He's starting to understand the weird human logic behind things. He's like, huh? No, not cool. His like a uh, human cloaking device is like starting to kick in on a mental level. It's like, no, right. This is, they don't need to know these things. So I suppose this is the first time you've done anything like this. Yes. But saying it's the first time really doesn't matter because you're here and you're willing to do it. So that really doesn't get you off the hook, does it? No. What do you do for a living, Jerry? I'm a park attendant. A park attendant. And presumably in that position you have contact with teenage kids, girls, and boys. Mm -hmm. All at the legal age, I guess 18. So when you say park attendant, what exactly do you do? I'm a park attendant. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, uh, what? What do you do there? You attend a park. A national park? A tot lot? Bruh. A parking attendant? You be putting cars away? You be... What? 
I'm gonna go around pick up trash and stuff like that. In public parks. Yeah. Oh, so he's on probation and has to do community service. I get it. I get it. In what city? LA. LA. And so you're in the public parks and you're exposed to kids. Pretty much. Pretty much, Chris. I mean, pretty much. Is this appropriate behavior for somebody who is out in the public and, and has contact with children, teenagers? No, it's not. So what should happen to you, Jared? No. No. You dealt with on, on the legal extent of the law. How does your how does your law how, how do you guys what does your legal system do? Did you bring anything with you today? Nope. Anything for Chloe? Nope. You're sure? Positive. No, he didn't bring her the chocolates. I mean, he said he was gonna... What is it with the predators who say they're gonna bring the thing and then don't? Like, really? That was red flag number one. You don't have the chocolates? That's a red flag. That's the first red flag. Oh look, there's a red flag behind him. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> well... There's a couple things you need to know. I liked that. What? That was a very silly delivery from Chris Hansen. I think he's just like, this is odd. There's some things you need to know. Now. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. We're doing a story on adults. His brain's like, blur, 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 filing, blur, blur, filing, blur, blur, searching, blur, blur, searching. Chris Hansen, Chris Hansen, Chris Hansen. Error. Error 404. We try to meet young teens on the internet. If there's anything else you'd like to say, we'd like to hear it. If not, you're obviously free to go. Okay. Feel free to leave. Okay. Could it be possible to ask if I could keep be anonymous or would I be just be exposed? Will I be exposed? So he really did have an error 404. <laughs> this is television! We have made no decisions as to who's going to be in the story yet. We just don't know. Okay. No, we definitely airing your ass. But you're free to go. I understand. Put your hands behind your head. Put your hands behind your head. Put down your knees. Okay. Oh my god. That was also a very odd arrest for what they do on this. I mean, just everything about this, it's almost like they knew that there was something not right. They're privy to certain information about what's going on here. And they're like, hands behind your head. Don't panic. Just open the gate. Boom. I'm here. No escape. Scary! Okay. Say what's going on? Is that going to be temporary or just temporary? Okay, good. I just don't want to be out here too long, you know? Now you're going to go home quickly. I need to go home quickly. The mothership. She's leaving. I got to go home quick. No. His face doesn't look right. I don't know. Maybe I'm just tweaking. And the resolution is low AF. <laughs> the quietest arrest I've ever seen on this show. Okay, so now we're gonna hear what Chris Hansen thinks about this guy personally. Because even he had to take a second and talk about this motherfucker. I can't believe he's not one of the more popular predators that people comment on. 
When I look back at the 51 men who surfaced during our To Catch a Predator investigation in Riverside, California, one of them sticks out for a number of different reasons. Yes, we had a teacher. Yes, we had an actor. Yes, we had people from all walks of life. On Earth. (laughs) We had guys who were even convicted before of sexually assaulting minors. 51 guys, imagine. But one guy, Jerry Wayne Martin Kosas, stands out for a number of reasons. First of all, when you look at somebody, you know, people always ask me, what do these guys have in common? And usually I say they don't stand out in a crowd, but every once in a while you see somebody just going through your routine life and you look at them and you say, that guy is odd. That guy was Jerry Wayne Martin Kosas. Jerry at the time was 30 years old. This was in early 2006. It was the first investigation we did where we collaborated with law enforcement, the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. Sergeant, then Lieutenant, now Sheriff Chad Bianco led the investigation for the Sheriff's Department. And on a Sunday in January, in walks Jerry Kosis. Now, Jerry, who worked in maintenance at a park in Tarzana, California, chatted online with a girl, a decoy posing as a girl, named Chloe. Chloe was 13, and her screen name was Barbie Girl because she liked to play with Barbies. Now, there was no doubt that the profile, the person Jerry thought he was chatting with, was a kid. And that is made clear time and time again in the chat log. First of all, the name, Barbie Girl. Second of all, she comes out and says she's 13. And you can see this early on in the chat. And the profile of Chloe, Barbie girl, is one of a girl who lives with her mom in Riverside, whose dad died about a year ago, and now the mom has a girlfriend. And this gets discussed in the chat. I guess that's cool. Wait, I want to know more about their fake marriage. Like, what? what's their story? How long had she been curious about the other, about the same sex as herself? Uh, was the husband aware of these things before he died? That they, were they swingers? And it's kind of a way, I suppose, for the perverted justice decoys to just to create a different scenario. Realistic, but different. What it does is it paints a portrait to the predator of somebody who may be a little bit vulnerable, who's in a different sort of lifestyle, whose parents aren't there traditionally at home with the child. And that gives the predator an opportunity to think, hmm, I can strike here. And it also leads to colorful conversation. And I'll give you an example. So this starts, the conversation does. December 18th, 2005. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good, says Jerry Kosas. Cool. Jerry asks, are you ready for Christmas? Now again, nonchalant, very casual conversation. Barbie girl asks, what you doing? Chilling. You, he asks. Sitting here, LOL. Oh, chatting with many people, he wants to know? No. Lots of bots, she says. Oh, well, pour water on them and watch them rust. You didn't go out tonight? LOL, no. Why not? Because my mom's girlfriend not let me. Oh, and you want to go out? It'd be cool, she says, but I can't go anywhere on a school night. My name's Chloe, 13, female, California, and you? Well, my name is Jerry, and I'm 30, male, Southern California. At least it's honest. Hi, Jerry. Nice to meet you. And nice to meet you, too, says Jerry. What do you like to do for fun? He asks, well, swim, hike, play pool, go out. Now, right here, this 30-year-old man knows that he's chatting with a 13-year-old girl. Why does he continue if he doesn't want to groom this child into an inappropriate sexual liaison? This is where it turns. Right here, this is the opportunity when Jerry Kosas could have said, this is inappropriate. 
this isn't right. You're 13. See ya. But he doesn't. For three weeks, he continues this conversation. I hope your folks don't mind you chatting with me. Why should they, she says. Just asking, says Jerry. It's just chatting, LOL. I know. Do you chat often? And then she explains that, you know, her mom's girlfriend is here at the house, that her dad died last year. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, he says. I guess your mom likes women? I hope so, he says. Again, probing. Yeah, not till my dad died, but since he died, she likes girls. Okay, I guess that's cool, he says. Thanks, LOL. Yeah, I guess. You like girls too? Ooh, no, he, 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 he says. Okay, so I guess you need a boyfriend then. Keyword boy. Here we go. Another round of grooving. But don't rush into anything with someone. Now, this is the part where he is going to be the big brother, the advisor. Here comes the ascended master, Jerry Kosis. Kosis? Coxack? I'm not monetizing these right now. I can say that. Coxack! Jerry Coxack! <laughs> but you'll see later in the chat that that's not the case at all. He talks about what he does for a living. He says he works in a park. He's a maintenance guy in reality. Picks up the trash. And you have to wonder... That's still working in a park, Chris. Come on. Don't be, don't be classist. <laughs> and you have to wonder, you know, as, as you're out and about, I guess we all do this. You know, who's that guy over there? What's he capable of? You know, in our last episode, we talked about Charles Lawrence, who had a dark secret. A guy I knew from the commuter train who ended up showing up in my predator investigation in Fairfield, Connecticut. Yeah, that was fucking weird. <laughs> who would have never have guessed that? And you probably wouldn't guess that Jerry Kosis, if you saw him working in a park, would be capable of grooming and trying to sexually assault a 13 year old. Yeah, no, you're right, Chris. I don't know if that, I don't think that I would believe he was capable of grooming, but I would definitely think that he was capable of something odd. He just has an aura of unnaturalness and God forbid he does have a diagnosis or whatever. I'm going to be canceled, but I've never been. What's the opposite of being canceled? Not canceled. <laughs> On air. But these guys are out there. And that's the scary part of this is you don't know who they are. And that's why we do these investigations. Have you brothers or sisters, he asks. Only one. No, she says. Oh, you the only one? Yeah, he he. So you get spoiled. I don't think so. My dad spoiled me. My mom never did. Oh, do you like to swim? He asks. Yeah, I do. That's cool. Now he's talking about finding something in common with this girl. Swimming. Later there'll be talk about defecating. urinating. Defecating. It's hard to defecating? Dude wants to be pooped on as well? All right. Okay, well, Chris, you made no mention of that <laughs> uh, before. That's a bit, um, defecate is just such a strong word, like fecal matter. Pretty cool. I am kink shaming. It's hard to tell where this guy is coming from at this point, but it becomes pretty clear later. And just to make sure that he knows he's talking to a child, the decoy, explains what kind of music she likes. Britney Spears. Just her? That's all you like, he asks? I like her mostly. Like Usher and stuff. That's cool, he says. So I guess you like dance, too, yeah? You dance good? I try. Well, I'm like a bull in a china cabinet. So here he is at 30, chatting with a 13-year-old girl, admitting he's got some faults, but willing to, you know, hang out and try to be him. And during the chat... He refers to the girl maybe having to pee. He says, well, it's been about an hour since you last made a pit stop. You got a piss? Got go potty? If you know what that means. If you know what that means. Dude's talking about... Now's not the time for to be prudent, sir. You want me to go pee, she asks? No, LOL. Oh. I want you to go poopy. Oh, you want to? Not really. 
okay, I hope not, he, he, because I'm not ready to lift the seat on you yet. Lift the seat on you yet? What does that mean? So he wants to pee on her too. He wants mutual reception with the golden shower. You trying to get rid of me, she asks? No, I wouldn't want you to leave. Good, I don't want to. I finally got someone nice to chat with. Okay. Oh, you always be getting bad people? No, people just don't want to talk to me because I'm 13. Oh, your turn, smiley face. Okay, if you're getting bored, we do something else. Have you ever drank or still drink an alcoholic beverage? So here he is introducing the idea to a 13-year-old girl of drinking alcohol. Dude didn't even bring chocolate and he's going to offer her... Uh, Thank you for that. She says, I can get beer or wine if I want to. I used to before, but don't really do it much anymore. Okay, some more basic chatter. He asks the decoy what her mom and her mom's girlfriend are doing. She says, my mom's still at work and the girlfriend is just laying here. I think she passed out because she drinks too much. This family, whoa, is highly dysfunctional. I'm into it. Like, this is actually an interesting backstory. It's not just your run-of-the-mill trash family. So you're pretty much all alone then, he asks. Yeah. Sorry, I can't tickle you. What's with the tickling? I don't like the tickling. I don't like to be tickled like that. People who want to tickle... To be the tickler, that's a sick power play. Like, you got some control issues if you enjoy being a tickler. Fucking sadist. LOL. No, I pee on myself. I so ticklish. She knows what to say. She know he liked the pee pee. She, she know he liked the tickle. Like I said in the last video, that's like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> that's like logic. <laughs> That's basic algebra. <laughs> oh, you would? Yes, probably. That might be fun then. So now he's saying that it might be fun to tickle this 13-year-old girl until she urinates. How long would you last? If I did tickle you, I don't know, not long, 10 minutes, 20 or 30. I, I could not imagine being tickled for more than two minutes. God, even that's way too much. Being tickled nonstop for 10, 20, 30 fucking minutes? Now that's some sick shit. That's where I draw the line. You're probably five, she says. Okay. Well, do you have a most ticklish spot? Yes, I do. My neck, my feet, behind my knees. Okay. And my sides are worse. Nice. How about your tummy, he asks, or back? Yeah, I ticklish everywhere. Okay. So you'd be fun to hold down and tickle then. Chill the fuck out. She gonna piss on you. She wanna dookie on you. She ain't... I guess this little girl ain't got much else going on for her. <laughs> LOL, I don't know if you want to get pee on you and then see how fast you can run. He, he, he asks. That's creepy. He's trying to manhunt her. He asks. Well, if I'm holding you down, it'd be hard to get me, right? Okay, now he's long ago crossed the line. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> okay, and for some reason, um, <laughs> that's where the video ends. But yeah. So what do you guys think? Am I out of line? I mean, all these guys are off, but this guy is just on a different level. I mean, the guy who wanted the decoy to fuck the cat was like on a different level, but still not as fucking off as this guy. The guy who got caught twice in a row, first time online and the second time they met him at the fucking subway. True Tree Cat fans will know who I'm talking about. Even he was not as bizarre as this guy. And both of those dudes that I had just mentioned, the cat fucking guy and the subway pee pee guy or whatever, both of those predators walked in the house naked. <laughs> and still, still, they're not as odd and abnormal as the way, way predator. So tell me what you guys think. Uh, hopefully there's no really horrible laggy video in this. I tried to cut up, uh, cut it up while while recording. Uh, but yeah. If you made it this far, you're welcome to like and subscribe. I'm not telling you not to. Don't forget, 
to leave your heart emoji favorite color in the comments if you made it this far because if you made it this far you're a real one because I didn't even make it this far I don't even know where I am what the fuck am I talking about bro all right that'll do